Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Emily. Hello. I've been making A-level politics for revision videos. Uh, my other subjects are English literature and music A-level. So if you guys want to see any revision videos, particularly on English lit, then leave them down in the comments what you want me to talk about. In this video, I'm going to be covering the topic of socialism in as little time as possible. Um, before we start, first of all, I'm very, very sorry, this is echoey, and I apologise for the hood. Basically, um, I'm sitting in our conservatory, uh, it hasn't been painted, there's no heating, there's no electrics, nothing in here. Uh, so it's a bit cold, uh, and that'll be why it's echoey. So, socialism is one of the three core ideologies which you need for... Um, like the second half or like section C of um, the first paper of A-level politics and again this is for Edexcel. So we're going to start off looking at, I think the way I've done this and the easiest way I could come to revise this is by looking at all the key thinkers and the different types of socialism in terms of human nature, society, the state, economy and comparing between the two. So we're going to start off with Marx and Engels. Uh, now they are revolutionary socialists. Uh, now Marx's view on human nature is that we are originally fraternal and altruistic but this is being contaminated by capitalism and revolutionary socialism will rep repair this. In terms of society, Marx believed that a capitalist society is defined by class interests and class conflict and a communist society will be the perfect end of history. Uh, and he also believes in equality of outcome, or believed in equality of outcome. In terms of the state, capitalism must be destroyed. Now it is inevitable that we will reach class consciousness, leading to the dictatorship of the proletariat and a replacement um, of a socialist state. The state will then gradually wither away until a communist society is achieved. For the economy, Marx believed that capitalism is corrupt, inefficient and self-destructive. It should therefore be replaced by an economy based on collective ownership. Uh, and in terms of the comparison bit, because we have no one to compare him to, I'll just mention that Marx was a thinker um, so his ideas may seem radical and would not be easy to achieve in practice. Uh, and again, equality of outcome. Now, Luxembourg was also a revolutionary socialist. Um, however, she believed um, that human nature has not been corrupted to the extent that Marx said. Uh, fraternity and altruism still flourish in working class communities, um, but they are punished by capitalist economies. Uh, for society, she believed that capitalist uh, that a capitalist society is class ridden, uh, and again uh, believes in equality of outcome. The existing capitalist state must be destroyed by revolution arising from strike action. The replacement should be a state with real democracy, with free speech and free elections. Capitalism is resilient. Destruction will require replacement by, by an economy based on workers' control. And for a comparison, human nature has not been corrupted as much as Marx said. But she also thought that there needed to be uh, an increase in speed, a speed up uh, of the system to avoid all of the oppression that Marx said would come from capitalism. And again, she believes in the equality of outcome. So Webb uh, is our next key thinker. Now she was a democratic socialist or a evolutionary socialist, depending on what you want to call it. Uh, in terms of human nature, revolution will not help human nature that has been tainted by capitalism. Humanity needs to be guided back gradually to its original cooperative condition and has a negative view generally of human nature, especially compared to Marx and Luxembourg's. So in terms of society, the poverty and inequalities of capitalist society continue to depress human potential while fostering regressive competition. Gradual change using the ex 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 existing democratic system, uh, so reforms such as universal suffrage, 
Uh, she believed that expansion of the state needed to plan and um, enforce these reforms. And it was all about enlightenment. For the economy, a chaotic capitalist economy will gradually be replaced by one which is based on common ownership. She believed, importantly, that we should use capitalism. Now, that is very different to Marx and Luxembourg, who wanted to get rid of it. Um, and we should use capitalism to be elected into the system and reform it from within. It's all about gradualism, but it is still the equality of outcome. So Crossland is where we come to social democracy. Oh, it is important to mention that Jeremy Corbyn, in terms of where he fits in, tends to fit in between Webb and Crossland. So democratic socialist or a social democrat. Um, more web. So Crossland, uh, Crossland's view of human nature was fairness and objection to huge inequalities of outcome. There is less of a focus on collectivism and more on reforming capitalism. Society is not as binary as Marx said um, and indeed as it was in Marx's time. Therefore class divisions are not as prominent. So the state's job is to deliver social equality and social justice. Democratic socialist governments, e.g. Labour from 1941 to 1951, proved that an existing state can be used to affect radical socialist change. Equality of opportunity, different to equality of outcome. For the economy, a mixed economy, a mixed economy uh, with an increase in public spending, which is progressive taxation. So, he was more progressive than Webb in terms of using capitalism. So whereas Webb wanted to use capitalism to get in the system and then abolish it, um, Crossland believed that we should keep the capitalism but reform it. And again, there is a massive change here in the fact that it is equality of opportunity rather than equality of outcome. And our final key thinker is Giddens, and Giddens is part of the third way, so think Blairite. So human nature has been shaped by changing socio-economic conditions. The pro-fairness instinct is still present, but it now competes with individual aspiration. So society has undergone embourgeoisement. Egalitarians must harness rather than deny these forces. He's pro-meritocracy and again, equality of opportunity, not outcome. Capitalism and individualism are irreversible. We should have a free market capitalist system and encourage privatisation and deregulation. We should roll back the state and invest in infrastructure and education. In terms of economy, he's all about free markets and the state not intervening in the economy, leaving falling businesses to collapse if necessary, and competitiveness. So really, Giddens is Giddens actually described himself as a socialist sympathiser, um, which I think. I mean, if we're looking at the difference between Marx and Giddens, they're, they're a world apart. Marx is all about, uh, you know, saying that capitalism is horrible and oppressive and we should get rid of it and achieve a communist state. Whereas Giddens is very much capitalism is good. Let's harness it. He's sort of liberal, neoliberal type thing. Right. So if you want to see that, there we are. So that's just how I've categorised it, just on a little table in Word. Easy peasy. Now, before we end the video, I'm going to talk through three key arguments, really, uh, that could be essays. So number one, is Marxism redundant? Well, on the one hand, recent history has marked the end of communism. The collapse of the Soviet Union marked a failure of an attempt at communism. In the USSR and China, attempts at Marxism were catastrophic, leading to genocide. Capitalism hasn't imploded, but indeed has actually become wider, especially globally. 
Working classes haven't led to a revolution, but have taken on the characteristics of the bourgeoisie, that is embourgeoisiement, that word I mentioned earlier. And that is all whilst enjoying the benefits of market economics. However, just as Marx deduced, capitalism remains unstable and volatile. Capitalism continues to leave poverty and inequality, particularly in developing economies. Globalisation has weakened the power of national governments. Economic power supersedes political power. A disappointing record of socialist governments in capitalist states shows Marx's argument that radical change is impossible without revolution. And the USSR and China are a distortion of Marxism, not true Marxism. So, another key argument. Must socialism involve the abolition of private property and capitalism? So, on the one hand, yes. Now, this is the fundamental argument. Core values include equality, but private property generates inequality. Core values include fraternity, cooperation, but private property promotes individualism and competition. Marx and Luxembourg believed that private property capitalism led to exploitation and oppression of the working class. Marx and Lenin also believed that the collapse of capitalism was historically inevitable. Webb believed public ownership to be more rational and effective than private ownership. And Tony Benn believed that attempts to achieve socialism alongside Keynesian capitalism had failed. On the other hand, this is the revisionist thinking. The debate about private or public ownership only considers the means and not the ends. Early revisionists like Bernstein noticed that the working class conditions had improved and capitalism was growing. Democratically elected socialist governments would help this. Crossland stated that increased public spending, not public ownership, was key. Giddens argued that a thriving neoliberal economy would bring more tax and more investment in public services. And globalisation of capitalism has forced socialists to reconcile their core values to private property. And the final key argument is, does socialism require revolutionary change? On the one hand, yes, it does require revolutionary change. This is the fundamentalist approach. So Marx argued that pre-socialist states reflected the interests of the dominating class and would not allow the promotion of socialist values. Uh, Marx believed that revolution was inevitable. Lenin believed that revolution was necessary to preempt the horrors of capitalism. Luxembourg believed um, of the inevitability and spontaneous nature of revolution, particularly from trade unions. Trotsky uh, believed permanent resolution, revolution was needed until all capitalist states had disappeared. Mao uh, believed we should cement socialism via economic revolution, followed by a longer term cultural revolution. And neo-Marxists such as Ralph Miliband attempt, uh, said that their attempts at parliamentary socialism had failed. On the other hand, no, socialism doesn't require revolutionary change. This can also be argued from a fundamentalist approach because Webb believed in the inevitability of gradualism. Ben believed that the existing state required reform rather than abolition. And Euro communist, Euro communists believed that a capitalist state would wither away but would accommodate reform. In terms of the revisionist approach, Bernstein believed that universal adult suffrage could allow socialist governments and change. Crossland and Giddens believed that a welfare state could make progress. And Giddens believed that the existing state could be reformed. So there you go. That is the whole of socialism in just under 15 minutes. I hope it will all make sense. If there's anything in the video that you didn't understand or any questions or video requests or anything that I've said that is slightly wrong, feel free to leave all of that stuff in the comments. I will try to reply to every single one if I can. Most importantly, good luck. We only have a couple weeks now, but I think we can do this together. Good luck in Eurovision. <laughs>